Welcome everyone. Uh, thanks for joining our policy scrum on the World Health Assembly. This is Lois Pace here and I'm joined by a few um, speakers um, who have joined us. Um, again, we uh, went ahead and scheduled this um, um, policy scrum or series in advance of this year's WHA and uh, for today we wanted to have a discussion on um, US leadership and their engagement at WHA as well as how we as civil society could um, leverage or otherwise build on that. Uh, this came out of some ideas from our first um, policy scrum earlier this month uh, where people were able to offer ideas ideas as to kind of what could be a, a good discussion for us going into Geneva next month. So that's uh, that's our agenda for today. I am joined by um, Peter Mamagos uh, from HHS who was able to accept our invitation to provide kind of a, an overall landscape um, of, of how the U.S. Uh, sees WHA going into the World Health Assembly next month, uh, as well as uh, we're also joined by Ambassador Jimmy Colker, former Assistant Secretary for Global Affairs at HHS, um, who has agreed to offer his take given uh, his extensive experience at the World Health Assembly uh, and now being outside of, of his role. And in addition to Jimmy and Peter, we have Matt Robinson from PATH and GHTC who has a, a very extensive working knowledge of multilateral engagement and affairs. And so we're very happy to have each of them join us. Uh, we had previously um, had Jennifer Healy um, confirm for the event. She does uh, offer her regrets. She ended up having a conflict for today. And so that's why we've had some changes to our um, um, to our speakers. Uh, we will go ahead and have Peter present, followed by some Q&A, and then we'll have um, Jimmy and Matt respond, followed by another set of Q&A. Uh, as you all know, we um, always invite you to offer your comments or questions in the chat box to the right, and there will be a screenshot of that later for those of you who are joining us for the first time. Uh, but just to give a, a little bit of background on GHG and the World Health Assembly for some of you who are uh, newer uh, to our delegation, we at Global Health Council very much are committed to civil society engagement uh, in a number of policy making forums and uh, World Health Assembly is an important example of that and so we host a group of delegates for World Health Assembly and other events and uh, take advantage of that event um, to really speak with one voice as civil society across a range of global health issues. The WHA itself uh, this year will have a number of uh, priorities as uh, they've outlined uh, in their provisional agenda online. We talked a little bit about this last time um, about the function of the World Health Assembly and uh, some of the uh, items up for discussion there, uh, but here again is a link to that web page for those of you who have not been able to access that before now. Finally, with regards to the scrums, again, as I mentioned, uh, we had a, one previously on um, uh, how our community is organizing around uh, WHA, including our various side events. Um, we wanted to have a more in-depth discussion regarding um, the U.S. delegation, that is today, and then for our next and last scrum, which we'll go into detail about um, at the end of this webinar, um, we wanted to regroup on some of the ways we could coordinate as a community and also offer an opportunity for uh, people who will be attending uh, WHA for the first time to meet one another and ask specific questions regarding their engagement. Finally, as I mentioned, uh, there is a chat box that should be on the right of your screen for you to uh, go ahead and send us a question or a comment. Again, please do include your full name and organization if you do uh, choose to do so. And for now, I would like to pass the floor to Peter Mamakos, Director of Multilateral Relations at the Office of Global Affairs at HHS. Peter, thanks again for joining us. Um, we uh, welcome you. We welcome you. <clears throat> yeah, thanks very much, Lois. Uh, I really appreciate your reaching out um, to us. Um, we, we do value uh, the opportunity to get to uh, talk to uh, <coughs> uh, talk to your membership. Um, 
the uh, the World Health Assembly is certainly the most uh, is the high point of uh, my uh, year here in the multilateral office uh, at OGA. Um, just uh, I'll, I'll take 15 minutes to go through really what we see as some of the highlights. Um, first of all, um, just on the U.S. delegation, Secretary Tom Price uh, will be attending uh, for the first several days. Um, we'll also be going <coughs> with uh, a number of quite senior people uh, across the U.S. government uh, from the State Department, USAID, NIH, uh, and uh, CDC. Uh, we don't have our delegation list <coughs> finalized yet. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm getting over a cold. Um, but um, we'll, uh, uh, we'll look forward to um, our, our usual quite large delegation and being very actively engaged um, in side events and bilateral meetings and, of course, everything uh, that's on the agenda. Um, I, you know, clearly uh, the, the most significant issue um, at the Assembly this year will be the elect election of the new Director General. Uh, all eyes will be on that. Fortunately, that vote is scheduled to happen. Uh, the the first Tuesday, I have to say, the first Tuesday afternoon, because it's almost a two-week-long meeting, um, and and going into the evening if necessary, um, and that will hopefully enable us uh, after the first two days to focus on other things. Um, the U.S. government does not discuss who, uh, how we're going to vote, or or what our preferences are, um, but uh, we we definitely appreciate um, everyone's input. Um, on those uh, candidates, uh, so please feel free uh, to share those. Um, and uh, I, I guess there's not really much more I can say on that. We're actually still finalizing our uh, our, our views on that. Um, <clears throat> beyond that, the budget discussion will be quite significant. As people may know, WHO requested the first increase in assessed contributions in um, about a decade. Um, it, it's actually it's a three percent. It started off as a ten percent increase. It's it's the we understand the DG has now moved it down to about three percent, which is actually only about thirty million dollars of the um, <coughs> uh, the small assessed portion of WHO's budget. This is something as as people may have seen, um, we are uh, uh, with the president's budget contemplating cutbacks in, into that account. Uh, we're working very closely with the State Department um, to consider uh, how WHO fares in all this, and I, 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 I can't really say too much on that. Uh, we're expecting possibly the week uh, ahead of the assembly um, we will get a more detailed uh, budget made public, and um, we, we might have a, we're not likely to have uh, much guidance on, on where we are ahead of that. Um, but uh, we, we are very mindful of the reforms that have taken place uh, within WHO and, and are um, <clears throat> on an interagency basis um, uh, very much discussing um, how WHO fits in among the, the various UN agencies and uh, where uh, some, some agencies may are likely to take much deeper cuts than others. Um, so <coughs> um, <clears throat> beyond that, um, uh, I think it's fair to say access to medicines is going to be uh, a topic of a lot of discussion. We have a number of uh, medicines-related resolutions um, under discussion. Uh, we have heard through the uh, uh, NHK community that uh, one of the delegations may or is thinking about introducing a resolution that would call on WHO to take forward the actions of the high-level panel um, the Secretary General's high-level panel on access to medicines. Uh, people who have been following this are probably aware of the U.S. statements on this, that um, uh, we were concerned that, first of all, this was not a member state-led process um, that led to the formation of the panel. Um, we had concerns about the narrowness of the mandate. Um, from a U.S. government perspective, we always try to look at access and innovation hand-in-hand, in hand, um, and, and I think <coughs> um, we, we uh, shared the concerns of a couple of the, the members of the panel that those, um, uh, those recommendations could have uh, negative unintended consequences. Um, we have tried to convey to other delegations that if they are planning to have any text on this, uh, that it really will not be helpful to introduce it uh, at the last minute. 
Uh, we often do find controversial uh, resolutions introduced uh, the day before the assembly or sometimes even the day it starts. Uh, I think it's, it's, uh, it's going to be very difficult for us to get um, interagency clearance uh, if something is introduced that late. So uh, we, we certainly uh, would hope that any, anything on that topic uh, will come out sooner rather than later. Um, <coughs> the, uh, the, there's a trio of nutrition related <coughs> agenda items. <coughs> Those are all going to be um, something that we will be uh, taking a close look at. Um, I, I'm not actually sure that we're going to get much in the way of resolution text. Uh, they may be some fairly simple decision points even um, that just welcome the work that is going on from these expert groups and, and, and joint um, secretariat work um, on these. Um, but uh, we, we, we will be looking at those uh, pretty closely. Um, the public health dimension of the world drug problem, this is something that has been, um, uh, people may recall this, this um, flowed out of the <clears throat> high level meeting um, at UNGA um, last year or two years, a year and a half ago. And uh, we had tried to put forward a resolution uh, last year um, and ended up um, losing consensus on that at the last minute in Committee A. Um, we're hopeful that we will be able to have some text this year that really reaffirms um, uh, WHO's place um, as a, um, uh, within the, the public health world of addressing aspects of the global drug problem, um, looking at ways to enhance treatment programs uh, where, where countries decide to do that. Uh, we, we do still very much root this uh, within the ongoing work that is going on at CND in Vienna and within the context of the three um, uh, conventions on uh, drug control. Um, going down my list, yeah, we, th there's, a lot of, there's a lot of resolutions that are actually still open. Um, I, I think we counted there may be as, as many as 10. I know our, our new uh, health attache in Geneva, Tracy Carson, um, who started in September, um, and Matt Lim um, have been working diligently to uh, try to close a lot of these out. Um, uh, I know that the uh, resolution on migrants uh, had some intercessional work going on. Um, uh, the U.S. government also takes um, quite a strong interest in the, um, the emergency uh, response, uh, health emergency areas. Um, I, I don't know that we're expecting any significant controversies around the ongoing work to um, articulate what global, uh, what WHO's um, health emergency platform is going to be, um, but there is usually quite uh, vigorous discussion around that, um, and so uh, we 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 are we are looking forward to that um, as well. The <clears throat> research and development for potentially epidemic diseases. I, I think we're very pleased to see a lot of the work that's going on, and I, I think including with some of your partners with the CEPI initiative um, and uh, <coughs> looking at what WHO's role has been. Um, as, as we stated at the executive board, um, we, uh, we, we're, we think it's a very important area for WHO to be involved um, with this uh, R&D blueprint. Um, we do think that WHO has a role as a uh, as as a convener of global partners to talk about uh, how R and D gets done, um, we we do get a little concerned because WHO is not it's not really set up as an organization that um, uh, manages clinical trials and um, es establishes protocols for clinical trials. So we we do uh, want them to really emphasize the convening of partners for coordination rather than coordination itself. Um, and uh, a lot of focus on the polio transition planning. Uh, we, of course, that is a high priority for the U.S. government, and we will continue to be very involved in that, and, and we'll have uh, some fairly senior people from USAID and, and CDC um, who are there and quite involved in that. Uh, I think we're also very pleased to see that the um, SSFFC 
Medical products uh, work is ongoing, which is now mercifully abbreviated to SF, uh, which is slightly easier to say. Um, and I, I, I think I can uh, wrap it up there. We've uh, I've touched base on, on most of the items. Actually, I guess cancer prevention and control, there is um, ongoing work on that. Um, there will be another informal discussion at the end of this week, in fact, uh, that our attache uh, will be going to. Um, there's, uh, I, I think, a few paragraphs that are left in contention, and we are we are uh, working with uh, other delegations to hopefully come to a consensus on a text um, ahead of the assembly. Um, and with that, uh, I, I think. Uh, I think I can turn it back to you. And I, I'm only on the phone. I, I'm not on the, the, the WebEx, so if there's something happening uh, on via computer, I can't see that. No problem, Peter. Thank you. This is again. Um, very much appreciate that report out. Um, now is the time for Q&A for Peter. We did have one come through from Sam at 1,000 days. He was wondering if you could um, provide a bit more explanation or background on the three nutrition-related items that you mentioned. Yeah, well, of course, those issues, there's the, um, <clears throat> there is a uh, implementation plan for the outcome of the second international uh, conference on nutrition, it's that, sorry, work program. Um, there is the report of the Commission on Ending Childhood Obesity. Um, that is something that was uh, um, the the report w was accepted by the assembly last year, and we had requested them to put forward an implementation plan. Um, and there is also um, uh, uh, the preparation for the third high level meeting of the general assembly and prevention and control of NCDs, um, where they have uh, WHO has put forward an appendix. Um, that uh, all three of these documents look at um, the, uh, the various responses that governments and stakeholders, uh, partners should take in, in responding to NCDs. Um, and uh, so we, we've been looking at them carefully to uh, make sure that we agree with the evidence base on that. I, I, I think there we've seen um, some encouraging uh, studies in some areas, uh, but I, I think there, uh, there are a number of areas where the evidence is not really robust enough uh, at a global level. <clears throat> um, uh, so I, I, we're, we're, we are trying to figure out what the right positioning is uh, for WHO and, and as well still working within the U.S. government. We, we don't have final positions on those, but um, the, uh, um, a lot of the recommendations are around how governments articulate at the policy level <coughs> ways to um, uh, address obesity and NCDs. I think that's about all I can say on that. Thank you, Peter. We actually had a few more questions come through while you were answering that one for Sam. Um, there's one from Lisa Helmy, um, the ED over at CORE Group, and she was wondering if you could elaborate on the humanitarian agenda that will be put forward or supported um, and any yeah, reference materials that we could review prior to WHA. Hmm. You know, that is one. Um, I know that I have not from the interagency uh, discussion thus far and, and the from the health attaches uh, heard of any uh, significant areas of controversy. I, I mean, of course, one thing uh, that we are going to have to try to figure out is how to fund the emergency platform. Um, and that, that is tied very much into uh, the, the budget debate. Um, <clears throat> there is ongoing discussion as well about the uh, joint external evaluations um, and overall preparedness. Um, these are something <clears throat> that the U.S. government has been pushing um, uh, very hard. Um, I, I think we've actually been quite pleased to see the work that's been going on. This JEE process is a new one. Um, it, is, uh, it, 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 it is kind of uh, broaching new uh, ground um, in subjecting countries to this kind of evaluation. Uh, the U.S. government uh, 
actually went through its own. We, we subjected ourselves to external uh, uh, non-U.S. people coming in and evaluating our system. And um, uh, these, these reports are being published on the web. And um, so there, I, I think there is still a little bit of anxiety about this from some countries, although we've, we've really been pleased at the number of countries that have undertaken them and that are, that are underway. I, I, I think I had seen that eight have been posted uh, of these final reports on the web yet. Um, and so we, we want to continue to be able to hear countries' concerns uh, about these um, and really be able to continue to promote, uh, promote this work. Uh, we, we've, of course, been tracking the H7N9 virus um, <clears throat> that has been, uh, I guess, mostly in China right now. And there's been, I guess, the, I understand the case numbers are declining right now, which we're, we're pleased by, but there has been a, a lot of concern about that virus and so it, it to us does again underscore the need for global preparedness and and to be able to rapidly um, uh, detect and respond um, that's great peter thank you that was actually another question we had from michelle forsley on G jees that i think you um, responded to um, with regards to the humanitarian agenda though did you have any comments on that beyond global health security uh, no, I don't. I don't think so. Um, I, I mean, the AMR issue again. You know, very significant interest to us. Although I, I don't see any. Uh, there, there's no fault line on that right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we have a uh, several more questions. Um, a couple are a bit clustered. Um, they're on TV. Uh, one is from Aaron Morton at TV Alliance, and the other is from David Bryden from Results. Um, uh, let's see, there's one question really around what the USG is planning uh, in advance of the ministerial meeting in Moscow and whether the U.S. will be um, attending that as well as doing anything at WHA to prepare for that discussion. Um, also, um, there's a question whether or not you would be willing to comment uh, on WHO um, not addressing NPR-TB um, with regards to priority pathogens. Wow. Okay. Um, those are two questions I cannot answer. Um, I, I uh, have, have not been tracking those uh, uh, closely. Um, as, as you know, there's a lot of agenda items, and those are ones that uh, I probably will need to focus on. I'd be happy if uh, folks want to send an email to me. I could, I could uh, try to find out a quick answer and, and would be happy to get back um, to people with. Okay, thank you, Peter. We appreciate that. We can send those your way and uh, follow up with both of those, um, those attendees accordingly. Uh, our final question is from uh, Nadia Cobb uh, at University of Utah. And Nadia was wondering about follow-up or further engagement on Health Workforce 2030 and the High-Level Commission on Health, Employment, and Economic Growth. Okay. <coughs> Yeah, um, I don't actually, that's another uh, area that I don't have too much on. This is something that our, um, uh, we've been working with, our, uh, our Geneva team have been a lot more involved with, um, and I, I have to say that that has not uh, filtered into my brain yet. Um, it, it's been a little overwhelming uh, with some of these agenda items, uh, but that is one I, as well I'd be happy to follow up on. Of course, Peter, we very much appreciate it, and, and we definitely can understand um, all that you will have to manage. We don't envy you. <laughs> um, and I will go ahead and sneak in another question. Uh, it looks like it's um, from Israel. Um, Israel Bimbi, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, from the International Pharmaceutical Students Federation. Um, wondering if you can comment on to what extent the DG election will affect um, further discussion on a variety of, of issues at WHO or WHA this year? Um, <clears throat> well, I, I don't know that we'll see uh, in this meeting any immediate uh, uh, changes. Um, that, that's actually a really interesting question. I, I don't know that it's going to affect any negotiation or, or, or ongoing work based on who the need, new uh, DG is going to be. 
Um, but no, we're, we're intensely interested in uh, who gets selected and what priorities that person will have. Uh, we have, have met with uh, all of the candidates. Uh, Secretary Price actually met with the, the third of the candidates just uh, at the end of last week. Um, and so we, we have uh, shared with them our, our views on, on uh, what we think the priorities should be. Uh, moving ahead, uh, of course, we do think that there are unfinished um, uh, items on the reform agenda that we would like to see uh, continue. Uh, we don't think it's time to close the books on that yet. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think we're in agreement with uh, what a lot of people said about, you know, really getting WHO to focus on its comparative advantage among a lot of stakeholders. I, I'm not sure I can give you more specific than that. That's perfect, Peter. Thank you. Well, I want to uh, thank you again on behalf of our membership for joining us today and for, um, you know, being so open with us with regards to um, um, the U.S.'s priorities and, and any sort of thinking um, going into to next month's events. We, we wish you luck uh, engaging there. We do know that um, there is a lot to manage and, and track and I think are all glad to hear there will be a delegation ended up by Secretary Price. Um, that leadership is promising uh, and, and, and very much appreciated. If um, that you can share the final delegation with us once that's available, that's, that would be great. And also, um, I didn't know if uh, it was still open to register for the listening session. I understand that there is a listening session um, that will be hosted on the 5th of May. Yes, sorry, that, that is correct. Um, we will, as we have done for the last five or six years, um, hold a listening session here at HHS. Uh, as you said, I, I believe that is set for May 5th. Um, I know I sent you the, um, uh, the, uh, the notice on that. Uh, yeah, May 5th, uh, Friday, May 5th, 1.30 to 3 um, here at HHS. Um, and so we, we do welcome everyone. This is, uh, as advertised, a listening session. Um, it's, uh, we will not, uh, the U.S. government, uh, comment on U.S. positions or, or plans or, or, or debate U.S. policy, but it really is an opportunity to hear from civil society and other external stakeholders um, their, their interest in the agenda items and, and their thoughts. Um, I, if, if you, I don't know if you forwarded that, uh, if, if you want to send that to your members, um, please do. Um, there is a little bit of a, a difficulty in us getting uh, non uh, people who don't have U.S. government IDs into the building, um, but the uh, RSVP deadline is actually Thursday of this week. So we hope to see some of you there. Thank you, Peter. Yes, I wanted to mention that that RSVP was we did um, advertise that to our membership as well and uh, included the information on our website for those who are still um, wanting to uh, attend that. Uh, again, uh, that will be just in person and will be a listening session um, of people who can gain access. Uh, but, uh, we, I think, as Peter said, um, welcome uh, civil society attendance. Thank you again, Peter, yeah. for your time. And um, I think at this point we will go ahead and to uh, comments uh, and sort of reactions and other uh, insight from our other panelists. Okay. Well, thank you again very much for your time. We, we always appreciate this uh, outreach uh, to us and are, are pleased to, uh, to be able to talk with you folks. And I, I, as I said, I'll look forward to seeing some of you um, on the 5th. And yes. so I will sign off from here. Okay. Great. Thank you, Peter. We'll see you then. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. So now we'll go ahead and ask first uh, Ambassador Jimmy Colker to uh, offer his uh, reactions uh, or other uh, sort of insight to, to what Peter offered. Um, again, for, for those of you who might have missed our first, uh, our first scrum, one of the concerns that had been expressed fairly openly was that um, I think not having had information on the listening session or about the delegation, 
um, there was concern that perhaps the U.S. would have a very limited engagement this year. It sounds as though, um, you know, we, there, there's been significant progress uh, towards uh, engagement and sustaining that leadership. So I think the question for this community is how we can continue to um, help demonstrate and otherwise support uh, U.S. engagement um, at WHA and otherwise. Um, and in particular, given that uh, a few of us have received questions from um, counterparts in other countries expressing concern about, about the future of, of U.S. engagement. And so I wanted to turn it to Jimmy um, and Matt for a more open discussion, but, but first of all, Jimmy, to, to provide any comments. Thanks very much, Lois. I hope people can hear me. It's great to be part of this, and thank. I think it is an excellent initiative from Global Health Council to organize this. I will, it, in a way, it'll be a commentary on what Peter said, and just to highlight your last point about U.S. leadership, Secretary Price apparently didn't need any convincing to go. He was eager, and my understanding is that he'll actually probably spend more days there than Secretaries uh, Sebelius and Burwell did. The main activity of the secretary at those meetings is to give an opening statement. And one of the things your members might think about is, if you have a point you really want the U.S. to make, try to get it into Secretary Price's opening statement through content, through contact with Peter. He'd be your first choice, which is Peter period Mamakos at hhs.gov, or my, the person, my deputy who's now acting at OGA, Mitchell Wolf. So Mitchell period W-O-L-F-E. Mitch will be the senior HHS person other than the secretary's office there. And I think it's important to use him and use Tracy Carson. Tracy period Carson at HHS.gov also will work, although she's also Carson TL at state.gov. And Tracy is the one in Geneva. And keeping in touch with those three people, as well as Rachel Wood, who keeps the position books and keeps the delegation headed in the right direction, are really important. But think about getting in touch with them beforehand, especially to try to get something into the opening statement. Or the other thing that the secretary does there is to have a bilateral meetings like 10 with 10 other countries' health ministers. And um, they, often those aren't confirmed in, in advance. They're not open to the public. They're done in rooms that are hard to find. But um, if there are issues that you think the secretary should specifically raise with China, with uh, Indonesia, with GHSA partners, um, as well as with Margaret Chan or with the new DG. It's certainly um, appropriate to try to get those on those agendas, either through the regional people or through USAID or State Department or people with whom you have uh, ongoing relationships. So um, think of Secretary Price's involvement is something that you have a stake in as well. The listening session on May 5th, again, I'll give some kind of informal advice, having been through many of those. It's a great chance you should be there, not because it's going to influence U.S. government positions very likely. I think the most influential thing that could be said at that listening session by an NGO would be a statement along the lines that I heard the TB people being very active. Last year, WHO introduced a TB strategy that said X, and they committed to doing um, this under X, but we don't see any reflection in the budget that they're actually going to do X. So U.S. needs to hold the WHO to account to do that. And for issues like mental health and surgery where they passed resolutions allowing them to do all sorts of things and saying that the WHO is going to get involved, for which they have no money, it's, I think, important to raise that to just say we expect the U.S. to hold them to those commitments because where the U.S. differs from a lot of other countries at the World Health Assembly is we actually take language seriously. And, and if they, we voted to authorize or to require WHO or member states, for that matter, to do certain things, we actually think they should be accountable for implementing what they've, what's in the resolutions. So your, your strongest point at the listening session is to talk about what WHO is already committed to and that they are or aren't doing and why that's important for the U.S. to get involved. It's also important to hear what others say there because sometimes we're surprised on the government side what issues the non-government community is interested in and those like access to medicines where there clearly are lots of stakeholders 
within the U.S. with, with often opposing points of view, it's important to hear the arguments of those people you don't inherently agree with so you're able to know what the debate's likely to be about. Side events are, there are important mostly for building constituency. The side events themselves will get, there are, a lot of, there are thousands of people there and so some dozens of them will come to side events, but it's not necessarily the thing that the people who are actually in the committee rooms are able to go to because they're simultaneous with those and there are thousands of them. So think about side events as a way of building constituencies around subjects that are or aren't getting attention and seeing who's motivated, but it, it's not necessarily the way to convince ministers of health of positions they aren't already informed of because they're unlikely to attend a side event unless they're specifically on the podium presenting what they already have decided. The main work of the World Health Assembly, as those of you who have been there know, is in these committees, A and B, which meet sort of morning to night and have dozens of agenda items each. The U.S. is represented in those usually by people at the level I used to have, the Assistant Secretary level. Ariel Pablos Mendes from USAID was often there, the head of international organizations at the state would often be there, head of the um, head of institutes at NIH sometimes turn up, Tom Frieden turned up from time to time. So they're represented by relatively senior sort of politically oriented people. None of those people are in place now. And my successor hasn't been named, the State Department person hasn't been named, USAID person hasn't been named, CDC hasn't been named, um, uh, NIH uh, hasn't been named. So you'll get the career people who are very good and in some ways that's even better because they're knowledgeable and have been through this for many years. But you do want to figure out who's going to be in the chair for the subjects that interest you and buttonhole them in the corridors, find out what's going on. That those sessions are open to uh, NGOs, but it, the logistics are such that you really have to kind of find the people you want to talk to in the corridors. But um, you often can, can do that and they're, they're so wild and woolly and there's so many statements made that um, often there's time to, to lobby for some specific language or to react to a statement that somebody may have made through those committee debates. At the end of the member state statements of the committee debates, there are NGO statements. A number of your organizations are members of groups that offer those statements. I have to say, as a participant in the meetings, those tended to be a time to take a toilet or coffee break because they were often pre-cooked, things that had to be cleared by a dozen or more stakeholders. They said almost nothing, almost all the points had already been made by member states. If you want those NGO statements to be appreciated, give vivid examples of things actually happening in the field. Very, and to have, if you can have a, a, a real person affected by whatever the resolution is, talk rather than the representative of the Geneva office of the group of organizations, that's helpful too. But um, don't put a lot of stake in the fact that those statements are going to influence any votes in the session. The very most important thing to be aware of is that the controversial resolutions will have drafting sessions. These are not open to NGOs. Member states will be represented by one or two people. U.S. almost always would have more than one in there, so you can try to buttonhole the people who are involved. And the corridor discussions in the drafting sessions are really essential. And although they're supposed to be completely closed, the, the trend is now that people are texting from those rooms and even sending screenshots of the resolution drafting as it's being amended. And so your if you have an issue that's subject to these drafting groups, you need a champion in the room and you need to be able to keep in regular touch with that champion. Because of the framework for engagement with non-state actors, FENSA, WHO staff should also be more responsive to um, approaches by non-state actors. It'll be a good test of that to see if they are. But if you actually need to know what's going on, what would this mean in practice, is WHO capable of doing this, who would be in charge of it, asking WHO staff who hang around those drafting sessions and the um, committee meetings is, is also important. And finally, just again advice since I'm now a private citizen, Intervene on the budget. The, the question of assessed contributions is a very close call. The WHO has not earned the confidence of everyone that they're going to do the job better than anyone else could do on any particular topic. On the other hand, 
they are the only game in the world for many of the things that we care about. And for them to have a budget that's half of UNICEF's and one third of PEPFAR's um, doesn't make any sense with the enormous mandates that we're giving them to do things. And I'm actually disappointed that Margaret Chan um, drew back to a 3% increase in assessed contributions, which isn't going to be a game changer. WHO needs a significant input of many changes, of changes um, that would cost a whole lot more than they now have in their budget. But to those of you who do have stakes in what WHO is able to accomplish to promote the, the issues you care about, getting um, to the administration to look at whether to approve the budget with an increase in assessed contributions would be a good use of your time between now and, and um, even between now and the listing session May 5th, certainly prior to WHO the last week in May. And then the question of access to medicines, again, Peter really is an expert on this. He's being a little bit modest, but um, he, does, he's, he will have studied up on all those issues that you've raised with him. And so do, do use him as a sounding board, particularly on access to medicines, but even on the other issues that, that were raised. He is quite a scholar, and partly it's because they send these agenda items out to the agencies for briefing papers, which then come back, and Peter synthesizes. So if he's not up to date on things, he will have to be by the end of May. Anyway, that's kind of my lecture. Sorry it took so long. Jimmy, uh, I have to say, we really liked you as assist Assistant Secretary. I think we love you as a private citizen. <laughs> Very much appreciate all that you offered um, for people, especially newcomers, but even people who've been doing this for a while, uh, just reminding us of of how best we engage and what really resonates with folks in the delegation and maybe what isn't as successful. I don't think we have questions coming through yet, although I had a question about something I don't know. I don't know if you um, mentioned specifically, but one thing that we also try to do, um, given the size of our delegation, is bring groups together for side meetings with folks uh, on the U.S. side, and that serves a couple of purposes. I mean, one, it's um, to really um, demonstrate the collaboration we say we represent and the consensus that we want to drive home, and so coming together with more than one organization we think sends a powerful message, especially if we're um, speaking to the, to the same issue in the same way. Also, we figure logistically it helps people on, on, on the staff side um, not have to schedule, you know, 10 different meetings with 10 different groups, but rather one meeting on one issue with a group of 10 people. Um, is that useful, or should we take a different approach when it comes to side meetings or sidebars? Well, sidebar, yes. Side meetings are a little bit more formalized, and we have to sign people to them because there are many. So side meetings, yes, please do um, think of those as opportunities to engage the U.S. delegation. But the sidebars are absolutely worth their weight in all the, the effort that goes into them, and especially trying to get uh, several organizations together that are interested in the same topic. I mean, the, the NCD Alliance is great at this. They've, um, they really do try to bring a broad perspective of U.S. points of view. And I, I can't tell you all that it's very, very helpful. And even when there's controversy, as there was on the nutrition and, and infant and young child feeding last year, being able to meet with the group of American stakeholders and, and hearing you out, you'll remember some of those phrases get into our statements and unquestionably influence not just our vote, but how much effort we devote to a particular issue. So we're not always going to do what you want, but you know that. So the but those sidebar meetings are very, very useful. And please, please do try to coordinate with people like Rachel Wood on the delegation just to get scheduling right. But they can also be spontaneous. I mean, if you really see something that's getting out of hand, try to grab somebody from the U.S. delegation and see what you can do about it. Thanks for that feedback, Jimmy. I, I do want to give Matt um, the floor now so that he can um, speak to his experiences and, you know, specifically from an NGO perspective and a, and a strong GHG member. Um, Matt, um, anything to add uh, from you before we open it up again? Um, sure. I think I might just take kind of a couple minutes to bring together a couple points that, uh, that Jimmy made with a couple points that Peter made 
um, in his presentation. And I think it's kind of the, the elephant in the room is um, what changes uh, are we likely to see um, with the new administration in terms of kind of policies and U.S. engagement? And you alluded to this as well. And I think what's, what's interesting to me is that um, listening to Peter describe the, the policy priorities um, for, for this year, the items that he's really tracking closely, it actually tracks remarkably well with U.S. policy priorities at, uh, at the executive board last year's WHA and last year's executive board. And I think uh, Jimmy hit this nail like, exactly on the head with this. All of the kind of assistant secretary level and higher positions are still open. So it is the career folks driving the agenda which means that I think, as, as Peter was saying, we're not going to see uh, the impact of this DG election this time around. I think for a similar dynamic, um, looking at, at these priorities, we're actually not seeing a dramatic shift in, in U.S. priorities under the new administration. And I think that's because it is the career hands who are who are still guiding things. And um, I think perhaps Jimmy was understating it a little bit when he was saying that's, uh, that's potentially an opportunity. I think that's absolutely an opportunity, um, especially on some of these topics that are highly technical, where it really does take someone who's been following them for many years to, to understand why a particular piece of language or angle or whatever is is important. So if I could kind of tack on my one piece of advice is that kind of this is uh, this is an opportunity and that I would strongly encourage all of us um, to, to take advantage of the fact that the career folks are sitting in the seat and really reach out and really don't kind of assume that because there's talk of budget cuts or anything that we can't get anything productive done. Um, we may not be able to get everything done that we would like, and those budget cuts may indeed come in the future, but that's not a reason to kind of back off of our advocacy as civil society, and in some ways this may represent a kind of unique opportunity. Matt, I think that was very well said. Thanks very much for um, providing some additional comments. I'll pause and see if others have questions or comments. Again, you can um, add those to the chat box. We'll give it a minute or so in case people are still typing. Uh, otherwise, we will um, move on if we don't have questions. But I'll, I'll pause here for about 30 or 60 seconds. Okay, it doesn't look like we have other questions from anyone, so I want to thank um, both Jimmy and Matt again very much for offering um, their candid take on, you know, how we can best engage, um, providing, I think, um, some very hopeful um, insights and pieces of advice for us. Again, um, you know, the Global Health Council is thrilled to continue to host uh, delegates at uh, WHA, and we really um, want to help coordinate our community. And so, obviously, um, we're here as a resource for all of you who are attending. Um, we also are in contact with all of the HHS contacts that Jimmy mentioned, and um, we'll be following up with them accordingly, as we have in the past for previous uh, WHA and EB meetings. Um, but thank you um, once again to Jimmy and Matt uh, for your time today and, um, and for a really 
being of service to our community. Bye. Glad, glad to do it. Sorry, sorry, I'll miss you all in Geneva. We'll miss you, Jimmy. Thank you again. Finally, uh, I will turn the floor over to Liz uh, and thank Liz for all the work that she does to pull together these various scrums as well as organize all of us uh, for World Health Assembly. Um, I don't know how big our group will be this year, but it's always a fairly robust group of, uh, of global health champions um, that Liz manages to wrangle. Um, she'll give you a bit of information on what's next from us um, and then we will close it out. Great, thanks so much, Lois. Um, so yeah, like Lois said, uh, our final scrum will take place in a couple weeks, um, specifically on May 9th at noon. Um, it'll be another um, hour-long scrum, and uh, like Lois said, we will kind of use it to coordinate um, with other groups that are headed to WHA um, to discuss uh, their priorities again, and then also any side events that they might be putting on. Um, in addition to that, um, uh, from 1 to 1.30, we'll have a, a new a delegate webinar for folks that are joining us uh, for the first time at WHA. Um, and that's just kind of uh, the very like basics and logistics on what to expect um, when you show up uh, in Geneva. Um, another thing to note is that our delegation registration closes this Friday. Um, our individual GHC member spots are full at the time. Um, however, if you're an organization um, that is a GHC member, um, you can um, still apply. Um, and like I said, uh, all the information is available online with the, the link um, on this PowerPoint. Um, and just to note that I will be sending out the PowerPoint um, at the uh, end of the presentation um, so you can access uh, the page uh, at that time. Um, and then in addition, we have a special events calendar of um, a number of side events that our members and partners are hosting at WHA. Um, we're already starting to populate that online. Um, so definitely go and check it out. Um, if your organization is planning an event, also please sure, be sure to send it to us at events at globalhealth.org. Um, whenever you have a, an, an event um, invitation um, ready to go, just yeah, send it right to us and we'll make sure that it's up on the website. Um, and then finally, I just wanted to note that um, if you are a GHC member that's attending on our delegation, um, you do have the opportunity to um, submit a statement to GHC for review. Um, that may be presented at uh, the World Health Assembly, depending on um, the number of, I guess, requests we get for each agenda item. Um, so if you are interested, again, you can check out our website for our uh, guidelines regarding um, statement submission. Um, and with that, I think I'll turn it back over to Lois to say any final remarks. I don't have much to add. I'll just say thank you again to everyone for joining. I hope that this was helpful. Obviously, we are always open to feedback and ways for improving this process um, for everyone. Um, but hopefully, you got, gained a lot from joining today. Um, and we look forward to uh, having one final webinar before we, those of us who are going, head off to Geneva next month. Uh, appreciate you all and have a good rest of your week.